Oh, hello world, or hello world, whatever. Um, I'm here today because I was inspired by a recent set of videos by the YouTube user Techmone. I think um, I've got a link to him on my channel page, so go and check that out. I like Techmone. Uh, he sort of presents all kinds of unusual products and forgotten tape and digital formats and that sort of thing. Um, and he just generally is a good presenter and seems to be a good bloke. And so I was very interested to see that he did a series not so long ago about putting together a budget hi-fi system for uh, a bedroom or you know some sort of you know that's not your main hi-fi sort of area the kitchen something like that and what he suggested uh, to put together was a record player a tape cassette player a cd player a radio amplifier and speakers all for the princely sum of 250 pounds which he described as really expensive and really sort of pushing the boat out now i am not uh, a snob when it comes to money and i appreciate that 250 quid is actually a fairly um large sum of money you know when you're talking about you know feeding a family or something like that you know it could probably feed them for a fortnight so um yeah um he's right in in that sense but in the sense of when it actually comes to spending money on hi-fi 250 pounds for all of that lot is going to get you a very rickety bundle of stuff from ebay and indeed the the stuff that he bought uh, really you know did come out of the arc including a cassiva now <laughs> again you know uh, cassivas they date back to you know the 1970s you know it's a cassette player amplifier and um, a, a radio all in one thing um, and it just seemed particularly old-fashioned. I can't imagine that many people having cassettes and things like that. And also, although people listen to the radio, um, an FM radio, I think, is still the highest quality or radio media, as it were. But I, I just think that it's just a little bit um, draconian in this digital day and age plus i think that you know to to, to actually put together a budget hi-fi system i'm going to change it this is not going to be something that just is going to live in a kitchen and hardly ever get used this is going to be uh, something that lives in your lounge my system as it were my budget system is going to live in your lounge it's going to be a new system and it's also going to have a much more realistic budget when you're talking about uh, hi-fi it's going to be slightly more modern in the sense that no we're not going to try and buy a cassette player and an fm radio as well um and i think that you can get most of what he said uh at a you know better quality and, uh, and and just sort of buying less but still getting more bang for your buck for example everyone these days has got some form of computer whether it's a a, a tablet or a laptop or um or, or a desktop computer system and therefore you know if, if you want to listen to the radio why not just tune in on your computer device and uh, also if you want to watch telly for example why not again use things like you know 4OD and the iPlayer and and that sort of thing and you know consume your TV that way and in which case you're going to want a high quality digital way of being able to consume all those things I mean even playing your console games and stuff like that you know why not have some sort of means within your hi-fi setup to be able to enjoy better quality sound. Um, let me be absolutely brutal here and suggest that the digital uh, sound cards that they put in laptops and computers and things are the absolute lowest of the low quality and where possible you want to uh, try and avoid using them. OK, so my system is going to have within it then some sort of all singing, all dancing, digital uh, 
uh, component to it that will take anything. It's going to have an analog source, i.e. vinyl, because it is still current. Um, and, you know, you don't need me to make all the excuses about, you know, oh, in the 1990s, people had thought vinyl had gone away, but there's a vinyl revival and all that sort of thing. It just is. It just is as it always was, basically. It never went away. And it still um, has the potential, at any rate, to be the highest quality uh, sound media that we have, and certainly better than cassette and radio to be honest, so there you go. Uh, so we're gonna have an analog source. We obviously need some sort of amplification and we need some sort of speakers. The budget that I'm going to set, uh, yes, it's a big shift from 250 quid, but I'm going to set it at about 1500 pounds. That will include uh, any stands and cabling as well that is required. And when while we talk about cabling, yes, you do need uh, to uh, upgrade from bell wire cable, you know, the really cheap NAF stuff that uh, tends to be supplied free of charge. Um, uh, the turntable I'm going to suggest has a captive audio cable to plug into an amplifier, so that's not required, but certainly you'll need um, a, a reasonably good cable to connect up uh, any digital component to an amplifier. So I'm gonna suggest looking at some of the products from QED. You can buy them on Amazon. And yeah, uh, QED are my favorite, actually, uh, cabling brand. Although at the moment I don't use QED, I've used them in the past, and I certainly think that they are, you know, a, a, a really good form of relatively cheap cabling that you can buy. Um, and while, again, we're talking about cabling, it's always best to try and keep these things as short as you possibly can, um, because you've got a, an electrical signal that has to pass along them, and the further it has to travel, the more chance that that signal is gonna be getting degraded. So, you know, keep them as short as humanly possible you know don't go above three or four meters of speaker cabling for example and keep the cables the same length just because you've got one uh, speaker that's relatively near your amplifier and one that is further away don't be fooled into thinking oh i can i can skimp here if you need four meters to connect the the speaker that's furthest away then use four meters for the nearer uh, for the nearer speaker as well um because again you get electrical mismatches and that sort of thing so yeah even um speaker cable lengths and also try and make them not too long okay uh, so with that i'm gonna nip over to internet and just kind of show you the sort of system that i would be considering putting together as if I were a newbie looking for a main hi-fi that um, I'm going to get some sort of satisfaction with that, you know, might last uh, a, a long time. OK, and obviously, you know, this is just meant to be as like food for thought, really. And if you're not really interested in vinyl, then don't buy a vinyl player, obviously. Um, but then you know, perhaps spend more on your amplification or digital source because uh, within a range of £1,500, I'm still going to have to skimp. Um, and so, yes, there will be areas that I will skimp on and I will show you where I skimp on them and I will give suggestions if you didn't want to skimp on that area. Uh, but, uh, you know, you wanted to put a little bit more money into it, I would be suggesting, you know, maybe extra features to look out for or other brands uh, that provide a better product. OK, so we're going to go over to Internet now. OK, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is just have a little look at a digital source. Now, this little box that you can see in front of you, this is the Cambridge Audio DACmatic, DAC Magic 100, and it's 170 quid, which, you know, barely touches our 1500 budget. It doesn't do anything by itself. It does need to have a source, a digital source plugged into it in order for you to be able to hear it. But what it essentially is, is a higher quality version of the sound card that is inside 
um, the typical laptop or desktop computer. Therefore, anything that you plug into it, instead of using its own inferior crappy uh, sound card, you're using this instead. And um, this will convert the music from a digital um, file into an analog electrical source um, to therefore to feed an amplifier which will then feed your speakers. Um, the beauty of these things is that you can connect more than one thing to them and as you can see on the front here you've got a source button here which allows you to choose what you want to listen to. So you can have a number of digital devices connected up here. So we're talking about uh, mobile phones. I think you'd probably need something like a dock because one thing that does appear to be lacking on this um, is, is Bluetooth, which is a shame really, because it would be quite nice if, if you could get uh, uh, a, a, a DAC with Bluetooth on it as well. But this is, you know, as you can see, it's absolute bargain basement chips. It's also perilously close to um, <laughs> Techmoan's £250 budget. But with this, again, you could listen to the radio. You, you know, plug a, plug a laptop in, listen to the radio, watch YouTube, and the sounds that you're getting um, will be... Uh, the sound as decoded by this box rather than the crappy one in your computer. Um, let me just show you the back. This is a, a particularly useful thing. It kind of shows you exactly what uh, um, I, I mean. Okay, um, so starting from right to left, this is just where you plug in the power um, uh, uh, brick, as it were. Here's a USB audio input. So, you, you know, just about any laptop these days has got some form of USB. So you just connect up your USB to that. Um, it doesn't need drivers. Um, and as far as I'm aware, that means it doesn't include drivers or doesn't need drivers for um, a, a PC either. Um, so any PC would just be able to you know, plug and play, basically. Simple pimple. But I'm not sure what this ground lift is at all. You'd have to refer to the instructions for that. But uh, yeah, um, we've got two identical, uh, what are called spadiff or coaxial digital inputs. Again, uh, these are slightly older standard here. Um, but th this would be to connect a CD player. So any cd player you know if you if you've got a loaded collection of cds and you haven't got a cd player um or you haven't got one with a digital output go on ebay and find the cheapest one that you can that's either got a coaxial or optical input and plug it in and then presto it doesn't matter about you know the, the sound quality of the cd player because you're looking at the sound quality of this um and this is where uh, these are the normal connectors to plug into an amplifier. So with uh, an, a, a little box like this, you could have potentially four different digital sources serpently via this USB audio input. I mean, that's all I use my one for, basically. I just got a, a Mac, an iMac, connected straight up to that. And uh, it's simple pimple just via the USB. And I get just about any kind of digital source that I want to listen to. My iTunes library, um, it's all compatible. It's all compatible. It just feeds straight through there and, and then into an amplifier. So this little device here for 170 quid, it's a, you know, it's a genius. Um, and certainly... Uh, beats any kind of plug the headphone output socket into an, an analog input on your amplifier. That just sounds absolutely atrocious via you know, any laptop or anything. So you're always best to you know be able to do it via USB. But as I say, you need a, a little box like this that will, um, that will accommodate your USB. 
So that's 170 quid. Now, uh, looking at the drawbacks of this, this is one of the areas where I have really skimped in order to get a decent vinyl source. Um, if you don't want a vinyl source, um, Cambridge Audio themselves make a, a, a plus version of, of, of this here. Um, you see, this basically has one DAC chip in it. Um, and the more the more upmarket ones, the better sounding ones tend to have two. And while I'm saying better sounding, don't just take my word for it. Go and have a listen yourself, okay? Um, now, an amplifier to to complement that and also to fit within our budget. Again, I've had to skimp. But Cambridge Audio themselves here do this Topaz AM10 for 200 quid. Okay, um, I'm not sure of the exact specifications of this and these things really annoy me, go away. Um, so basically you've got one, two, three. So oh, you've, it looks like you've got four RCA inputs and you've also got a, a moving magnet phono stage built into that as well, which will be very useful uh, if you're wanting to get a, a, a vinyl record player. It's not the most powerful amplifier in the world. It's only 35 watts per channel. That should do for a reasonably small lounge. Um, I would suggest small floor standing speakers to go with it, uh, simply because 35 watts is not really enough to be able to satisfactorily drive tiny bookshelf speakers, even though here they're picturing it, you know, with those tiny uh, bookshelf speakers. This is just, I think, just to show how um, inconspicuously this system can fit into your lounge. But yeah, um, it's, uh, they're hard to drive satisfactorily. And sitting on top of that draw unit, those speakers are going to sound terrible anyway. So yeah, I mean, that's a, a red herring. So don't look at that picture, basically. Um, I, I would suggest that for this sort of thing, you need to get um, a, a pair of small floor standing speakers because they'll be much easier to drive. This website, Audio Affair, it's dangerous for buying speakers from because you don't get to hear them first. This is a discount thing here. But these Tannoy Revolution XT6F speakers, um, they're £649, extremely expensive for our system. It's going to eat up most of the budget. Um, at the moment, having bought that, we're on 370 quid, adding um, £649 on for a pair of speakers like this is really going to eat the budget up. Uh, you may wish to have a look at something like these, the Mercury 7.4s, but again here you're not going to get a chance to hear them first. So if you want Tannoys, I think you can get them from Richer Sounds. Um, Cambridge Audio uh, equipment tends to go well with Mission. I think they're part of this a similar distribution group and i think richer sounds again uh deal with mission as well so you'd be able to listen to cambridge audio stuff along with mission and again you know you can get some very reasonably priced floor floor standing speakers okay now i'm not going to necessarily recommend an exact pair because again this depends you know this this bit here is absolutely critical uh, this is the bit that enables you to hear it and speakers do sound different so listen to a couple of pairs of you, you know uh, of speakers in the price range that you're kind of interested in but um you'll be saying well why on earth is he recommending that you spend some you know uh, more on a pair of speakers than on the amplifier and as I say the amplifier is where I have really skimped and that DAC magic thing um, again uh, the DAC magic if you wanted to upgrade it Cambridge Audio do a, a DAC magic plus or something like that uh, which is 350 pounds um, I'd imagine it would have more um, 
in terms of uh, digital inputs. Plus, I would, you know, I would hope. In fact, let's just check, shall we? Let's not. Let's not beat about to bush. I fi. Let's just put DAC Magic here. DAC Magic Plus, it's called. Let's just see, so I don't lie to you. Let's have a look at. Yeah, it has dual DACs, so you've got two. Basically, one to handle the left channel, one to handle the right channel. Um, it just gives a, a far more relaxed sound to it, um, smoother treble, uh, more insightful bass, that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, if, if you weren't going to have a vinyl source, I would go for something like that, or go for the Riga DAC, which is double that price, but it really is, uh, it's called the Riga DAC hyphen R, the Riga DAC R, and that's you know, a, a really superb product for the money. Um, I used to have one, I've now got a Saturn R CD player, which is a, um, a, a CD player and a DAC built into one thing. But yeah, as, as I say, um, you know, uh, the speakers are going to be the things that you hear this thing out of. So I haven't, I haven't really skimped on speakers, except that I'm looking at websites like Audio Affair and stuff like that, where you're going to have to trust the reviews, and mm, I don't like that. Uh, you know, find a discount outlet like Richer Sounds that you can go to and um, uh, and listen to uh, these things. You know, and you know, try and pick up a bargain, basically. Um, right now, the vinyl source. I am going to recommend, at minimum, for a system in this kind of budget range, at minimum, the Riga Planner 2 turntable. Uh, the reason I'm doing this and not saying get the Planner 1 is because I don't believe that the tone arm on the Planner 1 accommodates uh, cartridges with, a, um, with Riga's magic third screw system. I could be wrong, but... From the uh, from the blurb that I've looked at, I don't think it does. Um, but certainly, the arm, the tone arm. Let's have a look at the gallery. It's frustrating looking at those pictures here. But the tone arm on this has that third screw point there. Um, the the tone arm on the P1 has a hole there, but I don't think it's the right hole. Basically, but um, what it does is it greatly facilitates um, or, or makes easier uh, actually fitting the cartridge and and, and calibrating it geometric geometrically um, to the um, to the record playing on the platter. Um, there's something called cartridge alignment, which means that the point here um, has to by the time that it's travelled a certain distance across the record, it has to be in a particular orientation and a particular position. Um, and there are protractors that you can get which uh, which help you do this. But Riga's third screw system here, with Riga's own cartridges, um, basically uh, avoids having to use a protractor. You just plug it in, you just sort of screw it in properly and uh, it, it's just there and it's done. Um, the reason why the third screw isn't shown in this picture is because they're using Riga's carbon cartridge. Riga's carbon cartridge is a, um, a rebranded Audio Technica cartridge and it really is the, the most basic bargain basement cartridge that you can get. But, you know, for starting out in vinyl, it's certainly not a bad cartridge to use. And the reason why is because when you set it up, you have to do something called balancing the tone arm. And most people who've never set up a, a, a record player before, and you will have to do this bit. Yes, a dealer will fit the cartridge for you and do all this bit for you. But balancing the tone arm is not something that can be done um, in the shop and then taken home because if you do you stand a, a, a chance that you're going to damage the record player uh, because you should never transport a record player with the counterweight on it and uh, also um, it needs to be set up on the surface that you're going to use it on because the, that all affects the balance so uh, yeah you will need to balance that tone arm 
And if you've never done that before, the chances are that you won't get it quite right. But this uh, cartridge has an enormous range of, you know, by, you know, the, the sort of microscopic um, tolerances within vinyl, it's got, you know, I, I think you know, like the, you could be a whole gram out in terms of uh, tracking and still be within the recommended tracking range. So yeah, in, in terms of that, it's a, it's a very well balanced cartridge, but it's not a particularly brilliant cartridge. And if you were going to um, <coughs> think about upgrading, the reason, you know, another reason I've chosen the Planner 2 is because over the Planner 1 is because of the upgrade potential of um, of things like using a cartridge. I wouldn't use anything more than a Riga Bias on a Planner 1, whereas with this one, I think you could go up to at least the Elise 2 and uh, without it being overkill for the deck and, you know, and upgrade your sound quality at a later date. So this is why, basically, I've said choose the Riga P2. Now, the Riga P2 with the carbon cartridge on it is, let's have a look, 399 okay we've got that cambridge audio amp and the dac magic thing totaling 370 um so we've got basically 769 there which gives you enough to get those tannoy speakers at 649 um and then you've got some money left over for um cables as i say the record player will have a cable built in to connect to the amp um if you if you chose a, a other record players they don't necessarily so again that's something to perhaps factor uh, factor in but basically um for under 1500 pound there we've put together a very good system yes there are places that you could upgrade you know you could possibly um, uh, uh, get even the P3. If you got the P3, the P3 with the Elise 2 cartridge on it is about £650. So let's get rid of that. Okay. And now we're at 1049, which gives you, uh, you know, perhaps uh, a, a cheaper pair of either Tannoy or Mission speakers. I'm saying Tannoy by the way, because um, Riga products um, are famed for working very well with tannoy equipment. Uh, I'm saying Mission because Cambridge Audio and Mission are part of the same uh, group, I think, and uh, so they work well together. So, you know, look at either of those two brands. But, yeah, um, you are then, you would still be able to get yourself uh, small floor standards, which for that, amplifier oh hang on wait a minute i've done this slightly wrong we're looking at 370 for the amp and the dac plus 650 yeah that's it so you're looking at you, you've got um a thousand and twenty here basically so that gives you 480 pounds you should be able to get a, a a cheap pair of floor standing speakers don't expect them to be the most wonderful piece of furniture ever so if you've got a, a significant other in your life that really cares about these things then uh, you, you might have to do a little bit of sweet talking with them um to get them to <laughs> allow it in your home I think that's a pretty reasonable starter system. And uh, yeah, um, happy budget putting together of Hi-Fi. I hope I've given some ideas there, really, that don't rely on just getting a ragtaggle mob of, uh, you know, bunch of stuff, you know, from 1978 eBay and expecting to get the whole lot. As I say, you know, that, you know, getting a DAC is one of the most versatile things that you can do. So, you know, ba basically, you could import your your CDs at a high quality bit rate into iTunes, and then you know, plug your Mac, plug your Mac in, or whatever it is that you've got, and you know, away you go, and it's uh, uh, and it will work fine. And I don't think that that is going to necessarily reveal too many differences. I can hear the difference between those different formats, but 
Um, that's because I've got, you know, a much higher quality um, digital in, um, DAC in my system. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that's, uh, that, that's really helped you. And uh, happy hi-fis. See you later. Bye now. How do I stop this thing? Oh, there it is.